So hi, I'm Paul McGuire. We're going to talk a little bit about the different parts of a real estate contract and how you can get out and what parts of the contract that allow you to get out. So let's dive right in. When you sign a real estate contract, understand that when you're signing a contract, which is a binding obligation, but most real estate contracts, especially standard forms, have things like contingencies. And a contingency means that something has to happen in order for the contract to continue. So that may say contingent upon inspection or contingent upon an appraisal or contingent upon you getting a loan. These contingencies are in your contract and typically have days or time periods to have them happen. So for example, you may buy a property and have 14 days to do your inspection, say like a termite or a visual inspection or a walkthrough or look at the financials, etc. And during those 14 days, that usually starts after you get the information. So if you had financials and you didn't get them till say three or four days after you signed the contract, the 14 days usually start once you get them. So this allows you an opportunity to review things with your attorney, your accountant, your broker, your realtor, and make sure that every, all the numbers are what you thought they were or as they were represented, right? So that would be a contingency. Another typical contingency would be an appraisal contingency, which means that a certified appraiser would come out and look at the property and figure out the value. And based on the value, is that at the purchase price, below the purchase price, above the purchase price. So sometimes what's happened in a market that's going up a lot is appraisals will come in below the value. So you may be buying a property for 300,000, 3 million, 30 million, pick a number, and the appraisal comes in at, you know, 270 or 280 or, you know, 2.7 million on 3 million. In other words, it's below what you wanted to pay or what you offered. At that point, you can oftentimes negotiate, depending on what your contract says, to either a lower price or something in the middle and bring additional cash in to close. This is what happens typically is when an appraisal comes below the value, there's usually some negotiation that happens to move forward, or you may be able to cancel the contract and move on, get your full deposit back, and not have any issues. Where people run into problems trying to cancel real estate contracts is where these contingency time periods have already passed and you haven't acted or you haven't notified the seller or you as the seller, the buyer, that you want to cancel the contract or get out of the contract. And that's where you can have issues. As I always say, I recommend that you use a real estate agent or a real estate broker to help you with this stuff. And if you're into a contract on a piece of real estate, and you kind of feel like you're over your head or you don't understand it, sit down with your real estate broker and go through it and make sure you're clear and understanding what you're signing, what you're doing. If you've already signed and you want to get out of a real estate contract as a buyer, then typically, unless you have these contingencies and you are able to exercise them to cancel the deal, uh, you, you could be stuck. I'm not an attorney, which is why I recommend you get a real estate attorney if you get into a mess with a real estate contract that you want to get out of, either as a buyer or as a seller. Now let's talk about the selling side. Let's say you sold something and you realize, you know what, I sold it way too cheap, I want to get out of this deal. You may or may not be a get out of the deal if you sign the contract and the buyer is performing per the contract, you have a binding contract, which means you have an obligation to follow that. If you don't follow that, then the buyer may be able to sue you for damages or sue you for specific performance, which means that you have to perform on the contract. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes they'll allow you to walk away. But typically as a seller, sometimes they change their mind. So if you're a seller and you're changing your mind, then you should talk to your broker or your attorney, look at your contract and see if there's some way that you may be able to get out of it. All real estate contracts are different and they're different all over the state, okay? They're different in Wisconsin, then Oregon, then California, then Texas, then Florida. Every state has different local rules and different ways that they do things based on their state real estate laws. So you want to make sure that when you get into a contract, you fully understand all the ways that you uh, can get out of the deal if you want to and your obligations as a buyer or a seller under that contract. If you decide to buy real estate and go in contract, remember the most important thing which is your deposit as a buyer could be at risk 
and your equity as a seller could be at risk if you don't follow the terms of the contract. Oftentimes buyers are surprised to learn that they may actually lose their deposit. Well, what's the purpose of the deposit? You know, sometimes as a seller, you go to sell a property and you have two or three offers and you pick one and that buyer doesn't perform, you as the seller have been damaged as you lost these other buyers. And maybe a month or two goes by before they aren't able to perform. At the end of the day, buying real estate does have risk, but it can be very profitable, which is why I always recommend, again, use a realtor, use an attorney, make sure you understand everything you're signing and don't put your money in escrow until you're sure that you understand everything you've signed and what your obligations are. Typically, a good real estate broker will give you a timeline. This is due then, this is due then, this is due then, and you have those timelines. I literally just got off the phone with a broker of a deal I'm buying in Colorado, and my timeline is up tonight, and I had to make a decision on some things, which I just did before I shot this video. So in whatever real estate deal you're doing, just make sure that you understand what you're signing, what your obligations are, and what you need to do. I'm Paul McGuire, join me on the next video where I talk more about real estate and how you can make money in real estate, keep yourself protected, and don't forget to subscribe because here's a great way for you to build wealth. Learn from somebody who's doing it. I do this every day, all the time, and it's gonna help you for free right here on YouTube to learn. So be sure to subscribe, like, comment. I'll see you in the next video.